What's happening everybody? It's Ryan. Thanks for checking in. For those of you that have been to the page before, welcome back. I think I'm up to 21 subscribers now. Woohoo! For those of you that are new, welcome. So I'm starting a new series today on my channel that I'm going to call Car Talk. And to clarify, this has absolutely nothing to do about cars. This isn't like the NPR radio show Car Talk where Click and Clack talked about cars and had callers, all that great stuff. My dad loved that show, by the way. I don't even know if it's still on, but this is nothing like that. So you might know or you might not know, I spend a lot of time in my car driving from point A to point B for work. And I'm headed to one of my hospitals now where I have a case in a couple hours. And because I'm in a little bit of traffic and because I have a little bit of time, I thought it would be a great time, well, now that just sounds silly. I'm in traffic, I'm in my car. It's probably not the best time to be doing a vlog, but we're gonna do a vlog anyway. So I felt like this would be a great time to cover some topics that ha have been on my kind of to-do list, but I haven't had time to do them. And now that I have time in the car, I thought, let's get it done. So let's get into a little bit of car talk. So I've mentioned before, I am a huge rube when it comes to anything Apple related. I am a complete Apple fanboy. I started out small with computers, then got into their phones, and now I have Apple TVs, we have multiple computers, iPads, everything. I am invested in Apple's ecosystem. And I think it's that ecosystem that makes it very difficult for me to leave anything Apple related. So I've wanted to talk about the iPhone 10 for a little while now. You know, I've had this device for close to two months. You might have seen a prior vlog where I flew to New York to get the phone. If you haven't seen it, you want to check it out here. And I don't want to bore you with the finite details about the phone because there are so many great vloggers out there that do tech reviews. I mean, Jonathan Morrison, you have Marquez with MKBHD, you have Super Saf TV does a great job. There's so your average daily consumers, your average daily consumer, it's your average your average consumer? Is it average consumer? I, there's so many out there that you don't need me to get into the finite details about the phone. For me, it's more of your everyday user, what I like about the phone, things I don't like about the phone, and that's it. I'm gonna keep it really stupid simple. You know what, I gotta pause this. I'm in the city and it's getting crazy. I'm gonna go in the garage in a minute. Hold on one second. And I'm back. Hopefully you enjoyed some of that B-roll from downtown Baltimore. I had shot that a while back. It's been looking for a home and I found a home for it. So the first thing I want to address with the iPhone 10 are, is the notch. It's the big elephant in the room. It's the thing everybody hates on, talking about how ugly it is. There it is. You've seen the Burt and Ernie and all the different screen, screen savers that hide the notch, but it really isn't that bad. And when you consider the iPhone 8, the iPhone 7, all the prior iPhones had these huge bezels on top and on bottom, this is really pretty insignificant when you consider what's in there. I mean, it's got the front facing camera, it's got all the stuff for Face ID. They, they had to put it somewhere and I'd almost rather have that little notch than have a bezel run across the entire screen because I do get some screen on either side of it. So it isn't terrible and for me, I, 90% of the time when I'm using my phone, I'm using it in portrait mode. So if I go into a website, I can quickly scan it and it's not, I forget about it. I don't even notice it's there. And then when I use it for watching videos or anything like that and I turn it into landscape mode, 
most people are still shooting in 16 by nine ratios. So it doesn't even get into the area of the notch. I've seen Peter McKinnon is now doing some things where he's cropping it to take advantage. I think it's 18.5 by nine, whatever the ratio is for these longer phones. But very few people that are shooting video are shooting them in these longer lengths where the notch would in, impede the video. So for me, I don't have an issue with it. I think I forget about it, it's a non-issue. So that's where I stand with the notch. I really don't think it's a big deal. I think more people want to point it out because they want to hate on it than anything else, but to each their own. So for me, it's not an issue. Then to get into the phone with the changes and the removal of the home button. So at first this was an issue for me. I found I missed the home button. The home button was quick, it was easy. I, I really liked it. And Apple really paved the way for everybody else who has a home button. They did it the best and they made this big deal about how this is the future and now it's gone. The, the one thing I think Apple could have done is I think it would have been really cool to put the home button where the Apple logo is. It's right there. To kind of incorporate that into the Apple logo I think would have been sweet, but they didn't. They just got rid of it. For whatever reason, it's gone. Kind of live with it. And I'll tell you, I don't, now having it for two months, I don't miss it at all. The, the getting used to the, all the different gestures and the swiping, it took a little bit, but now when I pick up my son's phone, I find I don't reach for the home button. I go to swipe and, and use the gestures that I'm accustomed to with the 10. It's just, it makes a lot of sense. It, it took a little bit to get used to. Like if you wanna pull up, if you're in here and you wanna pull up all the apps that are open, it takes a minute to get used to that. But once you get that down, you can hold on them quickly swipe them away, that's really quick. Um, you can jump from, from app to app by just a little swipe. So the swiping is pretty intuitive once you get used to it. It takes a minute because for so long, Apple hadn't made any changes to their devices with how you interacted with them. Now they have, and, and I really like it. I think it's great. Um, one thing that I've noticed about the phone that I thought I was gonna have an issue with was because the screen's so much longer, getting your thumb up top, but they have reachability, and hopefully I can get this to work, where you can easily turn that on, bring all the icons on the top down, and that works really well. Uh, the cameras are awesome. The, the rear-facing cameras obviously are the, are the better. The front-facing cameras are, are okay, they're good. Um, the portrait mode for the front facing cameras is not very good. But again, I'm not gonna get into all those specs. You guys can go check those out on somebody who does these tech reviews much better than I do. Um, something I, I, I'm not crazy about that Apple desperately needs to fix, and that's the notifications. When you swipe down to go into notifications, they are all over the place. They, they're just, it's, they don't group them together they're just, it goes on forever. I don't know why Apple doesn't put all the Twitter notifications in one and you can expand, or I have Nest, so I get notifications there. Whatever they are, why aren't those grouped together? It's a complete mess, I don't even use it. I only go in there to clear it out. It's, that's the one thing that I would like to see Apple fix because it's something that needs to be addressed and it's just, it's terrible. Sorry, Apple. I love you guys, but it's terrible. And then there's Face ID, the, the other new addition to the iPhone. And at first I was on the fence about it. I didn't know if it was gonna work. You had heard that Samsung had facial recognition that could be tricked, so how was this gonna work? And was this gonna be as quick as Touch ID? With Touch ID, you throw your finger on there and it just opened. This is as fast, if not faster. When I pull this phone up to open, and I just, as I pull, it, pull up the phone and swipe up, it's already recognized my face and it's opening. And I'll tell you, there's two ways you can use Face ID. There's their most secure way, and then, which is called like attention to Face ID, and then there's not attention to Face ID. And the way attention to Face ID works is, if your eyes are closed, 
it won't open. You have to look at the phone. Your eyes have to be open. So I guess if somebody got a hold of your phone and you were sleeping, they can't open your phone without your eyes opening. So I actually turn that off. And the reason I turn that off is I wear sunglasses all the time. And when I'm wearing my sunglasses and I go to open my phone, it doesn't recognize. I don't know if it can't see my eyes because these are polarized or what the deal is. I, from reading some, some write-ups about the face ID, I understand some glasses work, some don't. So I turned it off. I don't, I don't need it. And if, if it was on, it's not a big deal to just pull my glasses up and open it. But for me, I turned it off. But face ID works. It works really well. And even using Apple Pay with Face ID, now all you have to do is hit the side button. And at first I didn't like it because with Apple Pay with a touch sensor, I just put my thumb on it. But here I don't even need to do that. This is seems a little bit more intuitive. When I put this up to a card reader that accepts Apple Pay, I just tap the side button twice and it, it goes. So I, I've been impressed. Face ID works, it works well. The, the phone is so fast, the, the processor they're using and the chip that's in this thing is just blazing fast. So I have to say, I just, I love this phone. It's, it's fast, the face ID works, the swipe gestures take a minute to get used to, but once you do, it's just very intuitive, it all makes sense. It's, the screen's gorgeous, it's, it's an awesome phone. It's expensive, but it's an awesome phone. And I think I'm excited to see where Apple goes with this change in their phone. You know, I've, I've been buying these phones since the iPhone 4. I never buy the S's, but the 4, the 5, the 6, the 7, and now, now the 10. And not to knock Apple, but I feel like when Steve Jobs was alive, Apple was doing so much in innovating and doing things that had never been seen before. And I feel like since Steve Jobs has left, it's been more about making money and not as much about creating and, and innovating. And because of that, you've seen like Samsung and now Google Pixel 2, and you have all these phones that are right there. And, and in my mind, like Samsung's phone has surpassed what Apple's phones were. The, the hardware and the way that phone looks, that screen on that Samsung Galaxy and the Note 8, they, they're gorgeous. They're the most beautiful phones probably on the market in terms of what the display is. But Apple's processor and the, the operating system and the ecosystem, it, it just, it's, it's what I'm invested in. I am considering there's a deal right now going on with the Pixel 2. I'm thinking about getting a Pixel 2, testing it for 14 days, to see if I like it, see, considering keeping it as like not a backup phone because I don't need another phone, but I'm considering doing that. And because I've heard such good things about the Pixel 2's camera and this the Oreo operating system. So we'll we'll see. We'll see what what we do. But this phone is awesome. Thanks for checking out Car Talk. What do you think? Do you like Car Talk? Is Car Talk lame? And sometimes I'll be talking in the car about another topic like smoking a brisket or whatever I'm doing. Those aren't car, car talks. Car talks are going to be short, little clips about some topic. So let me know what you think. Thanks for checking in. See ya. Oh, one more thing. It's, it's gonna go back. I just gotta test it. I gotta see how good it really is. And I don't know Android, so gotta, gotta play with that a little bit, but it's going back, I promise. I'm not keeping it. Just trying it.